What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Expedition Zero. This is a survival game with horror aspects that is set, I assume, somewhere up in the frosty north. I've been waiting for this one for a while. I had a chance to play around with a demo not too long ago. Kind of kept it on the back burner to wait to see how it polished up. Kind of waited to see what was going to happen with it and now the release is upon us. So, we're going to dive on in for about 25-30 minutes, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If you're, if you're watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I tripped over my words a little bit right now. If the Like, I tripped over it a little bit, but if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description so that you can check that on out, maybe wish list it, or if it's not your cup of tea, you can be like, meh. It's always your prerogative. Go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. Not everything is for everybody. Uh, also, down below, you'll find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to swing through live on any given day of the week, whenever I'm available, that is. Uh, let's play the game, shall we? Let's go for it. We'll start a new game off over here. Yeah, save name, save... No, dude, that doesn't go along with my normal nomenclature. People always ask me, why do you name all of your save games fart? Well... It's because I can type it with my left hand exclusively. It's not just immaturity. There is a level of pragmatism here that exists. Now, you could also make the argument that, like, why didn't you type deer? Why didn't you type reed? Uh, why didn't you type dart or cart? Or why didn't you type fez? So on and so forth. All valid points. All valid points. And that's when we fall back on immaturity right there. Let's dive on in. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have come here, but I needed to see. He just forgot about me. Left me here to rot. I need to get out. I need to find a way. And I can start here. Okay. I'm gonna close the prompt on off, and it looks like we are in an environment that is, like, moderately... It's like, what's going on with the textures over here? What is, uh, what's happening with this right here? What, 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 what is the, what is that texture thing that is occurring on that spot? Was there a bonfire or something that occurred? Oh, it's happening over here too, it's spreading! Okay. Alright, a little bit weird. It appears to have something to do with the shaders, from what I can tell. There we go, I had to murder the motion blur, dude. I cannot stand motion blur in video games. Easily one of the worst inventions ever in 3D media. Alright, so we can pick up objects and interact with them. Sounds good. We can also do like a little jumpy boy action right there. There's a jerry can on this side. There's an old generator. Find fuel. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's right here. So I guess I'll pick that on up. Uh, it looks like I can add fuel. Oh, there's no pouring animation or anything else like that? Okay, cool. There we go. All right, I am the champion of pouring fluids into machinery. All may look upon me in despair. I'm going to pick that up. It looks like we've got some weird little hobby horse like push bike over here. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, nice little animation right there. I would have liked to have seen a fuel pour animation, but you know what? I'm not going to be too big of a stickler about it for right now. I am getting some fairly major frame chuggies from time to time where it just seems to be like and drops the frame rate but we'll figure that out we got a battery charger we've got a storage is there anything inside the storage oh there's like a health restorative over here gotcha okay so we've got like a big old packet of pills inside of there this apparently allows me to travel in between locations so we're gonna have differing objectives it look like that need to be taken care of at various locations uh, what do I need to- I'm, I'm carrying a cable right now. I don't know if that's just charging up my suit. I think it is. Because we've got like a little battery indicator down in the bottom right. So I assume that that's charging up my suit. Alright. We've got like a Star Trek door over here. Very nice. Very fancy for the backwoods provincial cabin. Never complete your lumber shelter without adding in a sci-fi Star Trek door that goes hiss and opens on its own. Meet me at these coordinates I'm about to send you. I know you want to get out. They all do. I could arrange that for you. But we all discuss it face to face on my terms. And watch out for the lights. They sting really bad. <laughs> okay. 
I'll take the backpack, and apparently I have received coordinates to go to the wall. Is that something that I need to do immediately? God, I hope that's- I hope that's Ash. I don't want to be here amidst the mud and blood this quickly. What is this right here? We got a metal gate, but it's locked. Okay, so we've got to have a key card in order to get inside of there. I thought that was a refrigerator for a second. I was like, man, that's a tall boy of a refrigerator right there. I suppose I should probably go to the objective, but let's tootle around for a second and make sure we didn't miss out on anything. Looks like there's some kind of, like, workroom inside of there from what I can tell. Oh, and there's a Mosin on the table. Okay, so guns are going to be involved. That's what I've learned here. If there's Mosins, chances are it feels like there's probably going to be guns around as well. Or, I'm sorry, if there's Mosins, it seems like there's going to be combat around. I can rephrase that. So we've got our shelter and we've got the wall. Alright, well let's go off to the wall. I mean, they're hitting me with it kind of fast right now. Our character already said before we even started that he should not be here. And so I've got a bad feeling that bad things are going to happen at the wall. But, like, I don't know if there's time or anything else that we've got to pay attention to. So talk to Traitor. Alright, can I just, like, wander out into the woods? Am I allowed to do that or are there going to be invisible walls involved? Uh, there are invisible walls involved once you get far enough out. However, they gave you a little bit of wiggle room, so it's possible there might be something good, like, hidden out here in the area. I don't know what all that redness is over there. Did you see that? What's that red stuff over there? Interesting. Okay. Ah, uh, we've got the Tarkov-style Soviet walls over here. They've got the texture and everything, stalker-style. So do I have to, like, sneak in? Oh, God. Okay, apparently I've been gunned down. It was definitely a manned guard post. Fair enough. I was unaware that my life was on the line as of right now, but I learned a new thing. Uh, let's try not to get shot by, by guard guns, shall we? So my guess is we probably just want to run off through the middle of all that. Sure. Absolutely. Let's go for it. I'm ready. We'll get down back behind there. We'll just kind of go for it. I can't even see where the light is. I'm just going to sprint in and hope that I don't get murderficated. Okay. Murderfication has been avoided. Do I have a flashlight or something? Having a flashlight seems like it would be intensely useful right now. Like, I have a battery, so my guess is there's a flashlight somewhere. Uh, F is my flashlight, but apparently I don't have one right now because the button doesn't do anything when I push it. Do you found me? And you're still alive. You are not as useless as the ones I've met before. So let me award you for your efforts. A key card for the locked room in the house you came from. Okay. So you want to get out. There are some ways, but well, let's say they don't come for free. <laughs> let's make a deal. Something has been going up in the Motley Forest. You know that place? No. Whatever is roaming in the forest, it was strong enough to kill all of the soldiers that arrived there. I will be helping you in identifying the source, but I need samples. Find something that could be traced to that thing. And don't forget to get yourself a flashlight back at your place. It gets really dark out there. Okay. Directional sound seems to be functioning fine. That's why I rotated my head a little bit, is just to see like if the directional sound actually popped through. Do I have to escape from here, man? Okay, yeah, I, I like to endeavor not to die in most of the things that I undertake in life. Are those still, like, moving around? Oh, they're not. He's giving me free passage. Okay, so hopefully I don't have to do the sneak minigame after that first go. Although, I'm going to point out kind of the relative... I don't... So I don't recommend what he just did. Like, he told me to come over here and then... You know, he tried to murder me, and that's that's not normally a thing that I do to my friends or my confidants or the people that I work with. 
So, you know, some some reservations about maybe working with this guy. But let's go back to the house. We'll see if we can get under that room. We'll see if we can get the gun. Hopefully there's some ammo inside of there so that we can protect ourselves a little bit. I don't know what we're going to be up against. It doesn't seem like there's any kind of unified time that we're operating inside of. So there's no, like, day-night cycle. It looks like the maps are just what the maps are. All right, so the gate is open. And we have been given access to a fridge, but we need a pry bar in order to get into it. We've got a Mosin Nagant over here. I will absolutely take that. Over here, it looks like we've got a coffee grinder that we can disassemble, a mixer, and we've got a cooker. Over here, there's a printer, like a 3D printer? Okay. So I'll put the gun over there. The backpack can go right there just to make our inventory a little bit larger. And it looks like we can do some crafting and breaking stuff down in order to craft new things. Is there... Oh, there's stairs that go upwards. Okay. So I think the pry bar is probably going to be upstairs then. Like, we're going to find something that's going to allow us to break down objects. I don't have any rounds for the rifle. It's kind of problematic. That's a little bit of a pop-in right there. I'd like for the ADS to be a tiny bit smoother. So instead of there being a zero-frame animation right there where your arms just click into play, I do like the iron sights. I think they look pretty good. They've got the ring sight pretty well appointed. But I would like for that to be a little bit smoother in the way that the arms swing forward. It feels a little chunky. Uh, what's in the shelf? Anything good? No? Thought I heard somebody else's footsteps for a second. Uh, there's our pry bar. We'll grab that. And then what do we have over here? Warning to all personnel. The new analyzer equipment that we have recently received has detected a significant amount of organic spores in the outside air. The tests indicate that the spores, although relatively harmless, could lead a person to experience shortness of breath and hallucinations. In order to minimize productivity losses and limit unnecessary exposure, the following orders have been implemented. All personnel of access level 3 and above, as well as visitors, are required to wear BPS-9 gas masks while being outside. Personnel below access level 3 are required to take a tablet of Ritosin every time two hours for being outside. The orders are active immediately. You can receive the necessary items at the storehouse. Okay. I don't have a flashlight. But I think we probably want to get on that before too long. It did seem like there was a number of objects that we could potentially break down. So we've got wires and we've got gaskets inside of there. Okay. And you can only search it that one time, right? Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Like, I'd give it a second run just to see if there was, like, multiple layers of deconstruction. But there's nothing inside of there. There's some screws inside of there. The chairs and whatnot can't be broken down. Inside the cooker, we've got a generic controller. And we've got some generic metal. Inside the mixer, it looks like we've got an electromotor. We've got some wires. They do stack, thankfully, and we've got some generic plastics. And then inside of here, we've got a little bit more metal that we could throw on into the pile. It does look like we've got a milk can right there. We can disassemble that for crafting purposes. We've got a candlestick, so we can disassemble that for crafting purposes as well. Really hoping that we've got the stuff on us for making some bullets. Uh, metal and a capacitor right there. Okay, so what did I need in order to make the flashlight? Because they specifically said, so I have insufficient items for the flashlight. Oh, it breaks them up into components. Okay, so we kind of just stack everything that we've looted inside of here to get everything going. Can I like... Okay, so you can control click those in too to make it go a little bit faster. Uh, break down resources. That's fine. We've got everything broken down into its baseline components. Let's go ahead and make the headlamp real fast. So there's our headlamp. We've got that. And now we have quite a brilliant light, in fact, to illuminate areas. There was a pretty nasty dark corner up here, and I want to look inside of it real fast, even though I know I might regret that decision, just to see if there's anything laying around. It looks like the answer to that is a no. Yet, comrade. Oh, I guess I can get the cloth, too. All right, well, I'll take the cloth with me. Let's throw it on into the 3D printer. There we go. We'll break down the resources even further. I'm going to keep my crowbar on me. It looks like we do have a rig mount, so it's possible we may be able to get NVGs or something later on in the game. I'm going to throw the pry bar into there, and it looks like we've got an axe spot for down there. 
Okay. Fair enough. I'm gonna put the gun away because we don't even have any bullets that we can fire out of it. So, what's the point? Doesn't look like we can do anything with the transceiver over here. I am gonna set my respawn point real quick. You get some uneasy rest. Alright, is anything breakable over here? Like, I'm sure, like, the bicycles and stuff are probably breakable. Cook pot isn't interactable. The gas can came back, which was kind of interesting. Not exactly what I expected. Yeah, the bikes and things don't seem to be open for disassembly, so I guess we'll just deal with it as we go. I can take out the crowbar, and I t can take a swipe at things with it. That hit right there seems a little bit wispy in terms of the animation. Like, there's not a lot of wind back to it. Like, you know. But the bigger swing right there looks perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and go to the forest, I suppose. I, I'm sure I'm going to regret this decision. I don't play a lot of horror games, man. So you might, you might catch me doing like my, I might have to do like a little girl scream at some point during this playthrough. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not good at this kind of interactive fiction. Okay. All right. So we got to find some samples. I do like the lighting effects. I think they look quite good. The downside to this is that the encoding on YouTube is absolutely going to butcher this section of the video because encoders do not like fog. <gasps> Bullets! Yes, I would like to have those. I would like to see a little animation where the hand goes out and picks up the bullets, kind of like Subnautica style or whatever else. Yeah, I'm going to strongly suggest that you thumb load this bad boy. We're going to ignore the fact that it just ejected around even though the gun was empty. We're not going to talk about that. I have five bullets. Now, the good news is, uh, OT 54 RR, or whatever it is that the Mosin Nagant uses, is a hell of a round. Uh, so whatever we hit is going to be hurt. Like, that's just facts. Uh, but we've only got limited bullets for right now before we're able to figure out, okay, so I have five bullets, exactly five rounds. And we found a rotor inside of there. I'll go ahead and take that. I'm going to try to conserve my flashlight's life and durability. Because we don't know how many times we're going to be stuck, like, in dark areas. So I'd rather not have it running for right here. I do like the reflective effects off the, or, or the reflective effects off the metallic surfaces of the gun. They look really, really good. Nothing in here that looks uh, poignant. I have no idea what that is. Some kind of guard tower or something? Like, so we've got a mobile guard tower? All right. Okay, so we found our way to the military tents. But we were kind of here, like, on a mission, dude. Like, we were here to find some stuff. Can I get on top of that right there? Hold on, let me see if I can... There we go. And if I can get on top of there, can I get on top of that? I don't think that I can. Okay. Yeah, feeling a little bit nervous right now. Sure, they're doing a pretty good job with the atmospheric scene setting. Upload the anomaly. Yeah, there does seem to be some kind of veiny nastiness. Yes, thanks to Sempo. I guess the military guys didn't make it. Find me the other ones. Okay. Apparently I'm kind of cold right now. I just noticed my cold meter's going down. Is there anything, like, disassemblable in here? Oh, there's more bullets. I definitely want that. Yeah, that OT-54 whatever is great. Identification code 924-D4 Bismuth. After arrival on site, a small scouting unit was formed to overlook the nearby territory. The unit has returned after two hours, bringing back an item of unknown nature. The unit did not encounter any hostile contacts, but all men have stated that at a random point in time, they saw what looked like a shadowy figure moving through the trees. Available tools have identified items of a similar nature scattered across the area. A more equipped unit will be sent to investigate after establishing permanent command centers. Item is secured and will be sent to the main research subdivision station. Okay. I'll take the screws. Doesn't look like there's anything inside the desk. Doesn't look like there's anything inside the crate. The stove, it looks like we can split wood and light a fire. So I'm guessing that's how we get our cold meter back up. My assumption... Did I just hear a growl? I don't know what I just heard. I think it's just the whipping of the wind, dude. I think it's uh, just the wind being a little whippy right now. All right, wires and screws. 
I was thinking maybe there'd be blueprints or something around here that we could get our hands on. Maybe, like, increase our capability at crafting. Okay, nothing inside either of those. A little bit more ammo inside there. And then a plastic hose. Probably good for polymers. Uh, there's a piece of wood right there, so that's good. We can kind of warm ourselves up and avoid having to go back home. More ammunition. A sensor controller and some screws. All right. I'm a little bit scared right now. Oh, a battery charger. Nice. Okay, so that'll fill up our uh, that'll fill up our our battery on our flashlight right there, real quick. Very nice. Definitely take that. There's a mega backpack blueprint over here if we can get it going. But we need 50 metals, 40 polymers, and 20 electrodes. Okay. It didn't get us there, but we'll keep an eye out. I mean, it's got the word mega in it. How bad could a backpack be if it's got the word mega in it? Some screws and some metal. All right. Some more bullets. Looks like we've got a project case. What is the project case? A large case that can hold electrical components. Oh, so it's just a breakdown item. Okay, so like they're not saying I can literally put... Well, I'm shivering. Okay, let's go see if we can get our warmth filled back up. I'm guessing once we've got like an axe, we'll have the ability to chop firewood. Oh, dude, the outline of that thing scared me. I got nervous for a minute. I don't know where else we might find some wood around here. But we kind of need to be on that. Uh, looks sketchy. Don't know if I want to go that way. Looks, uh, looks a little tiny bit sketchy out that way, and that's the way we came from. I don't suppose there's any more, like, wood or twigs or anything else I can interact with over here. Nothing inside the trash can. Nothing inside there. We're not losing health yet, so I'm not that worried about our warmth. There we go. Another firewood. Uh, we can start a fire inside of there, but I'd rather do it inside a shelter, in all honesty. Like, I don't know if we need matches or whatever to make this work, but... Okay, so we're about warmed up. I think we're going to kind of test where we can go on this map. And just see how far out we can get. I'm going to try to use points of interest to navigate around. But I am a little bit of a loot hound. So, you know, it's going to be difficult for me to stop myself. Okay. I saw red up in the sky, dude. And in general, red up in the sky is not a great thing. Unless it's like one of those red sky at night, sailor's delight type deals. Nothing in the trash can. Anything inside these little uh, plumbing fixtures or whatever. Oh, there's more tents over here. I don't know if this is... Yeah! Is he dead? Okay, so yeah, dude. There's like zombies or something going on out here. Does the casing go on the ground when you inject it? Because normally with a Mosin Nagant, when you open up the bolt like that, you got to catch the unspent round so you don't waste it. Can we loot the dead guy? He's got an axe. Doesn't look like the dead guy is lootable. Was expecting a little bit more punch and a little bit more recoil uh, from the Mosin Nagant. For those of you that are not familiar with firearms, uh, the Mosin Nagant, along with most Soviet weapons like the SKS, uh, they've got some butt to them. They've got a little bit of kick. And so while I like the sights and I like the way the gun looks from this angle, uh, they definitely want to put some more kick on that. Maybe put a little bit of smoke coming out the top of the gun real fast. Like, you know, something just to kind of sell the shooty-shooty bits a little bit more. I think they could probably punch up the audio effect right there a little bit, too. I will take that wood. Nothing inside of there. On the plus side... Oh, there's an axe over here. Absolutely, I'll take the axe. Okay, so we're going to find logs and, like, unsplit logs around. 
I'm running a little bit low on battery for my flashlight. So if there's not going to be any type of charger anytime soon, I think we're going to have to head back and resupply. However, we do have some bullets right there on the shelf, which I'll gladly shovel into my pockets. Okay, a few more screws right there. Looks like we can actually disassemble the table saw, too. All right. There's a printer over here that's got an extended battery module. So I assume that that upgrades the, the battery. Okay. Oh, and I've got, like, a handheld signal transceiver, too? Okay, well, I guess there's a signal out that other way. I'm not going to investigate just yet because we need to go rest and resupply. But, yeah, we're running out of battery for right now, and we're getting a little bit chilly. Uh, so I'd like to head back and get that patched up, and then we'll head back out on another expedition just to see what we can find. All right, so I'm hooked up to the battery charger, which is, like, the greatest battery charger ever designed by man. It's filling us up quick. And so anyways, ain't no trickle charge going on here. We got that power charge. All right. Power charge good to go. Uh, was it inside a different tent that I lit the fire? It was. For whatever reason, I thought that I lit the fire in the same place where I could recharge. Uh, but it looks like the fire has gone out. How much split wood do I have left? Not very much. Okay. It does look like we have weight allotments we got to watch out for, too. I didn't even notice. So we can carry 81 kilograms, which is a lot of weight, uh, before we get ourselves in trouble. Like, apparently our character's got a strong back. Uh, so he's got that he's got that powerful muscle back right there. I don't I couldn't do 81 kilograms. That's a lot. Like honestly, if I had about 70 pounds in my backpack back in my backpacking days when I was doing geology work, that's about as much as I like to bring with me in all honesty if I could help it. I think we have logs over here. Yeah, we can split those up. That sounds good. Also got a little bit of wood right there. Now I've just got to kind of remember where I've been and where I haven't been. I don't know if I hit most of these huts back up in here. Well, I'm glad I did because there's more ammo. I don't love being out in this scrub brush or whatever. But we do have a decent amount of goodies. Making a longer battery seems like a really good idea, and anything that would insulate our jacket feels like a really good idea, too. What's going on with the well over here? Oh, it's latched. Okay. Fair enough. Don't look like there's much out this way. Then again, we got a whole lot of darkness going on. Oh, it's outhouses. Okay. I can't imagine that there would be loot in the turlet. But who knows? Maybe maybe it was like, take your bullet to the banyo day. Hard to say. What am I looking at up here? Deer feeder? Okay. Yeah, they weren't kidding about it being dark out here. If you don't got a flashlight, I think you're going to be in a world of hurt. I don't see anything too intensely interesting. I think we've got enough warmth to where I can check one of these areas real fast. It does look like we have a trail that's, like, leading up to something right here. Do we have, like, a map? Oh, we do. We do indeed have a map. Unfortunately, I don't really have a compass. Maybe we craft that a little bit later. But having the compass might be a good acquisition. Definitely give me the logs because we're going to need the warmth while we're out here. 
honestly, I don't even know if I need to still be out here. Like, we came out here for the thing that the trader asked for, right? And we, like, found it, and we, like, sent him the data. So, like, maybe we don't even need to be out here. Like, I may be out here longer than I should be. Oh, boy. Okay, yeah, weather's kicking up pretty good. Got a bunch more random pipework supplies over here. Like, basically sluice gates and whatnot. Or, I'm sorry, like, these sluice pipes or whatever they are. Little PCB right there. I want to make sure that I pick this location real quick before I go anywhere else. Yeah, maybe we'll make a fire right here real quick. That works. Man, they really captured the whiteout effect, like, really, really well. Like, that's one of the things the visual design of the game has done pretty well. The animations and whatnot for, like, the gun and, you know, stuff like that are a little bit wonky. But, man, they really, really nailed the environmental lighting, diffusion, refractory effects. Like, that's what it looks like when you're out in the snow and there's, like, a street lamp down the street and the blizzard is coming through. Like, they locked that down pretty well. Oh, dude. Oh, dead guy. He's got 762 on him. Oh, never mind. That's off 54. Okay, I was hoping it'd be off 39. Yeah, that would imply the existence of an AKM laying around somewhere, which is like full auto awesomeness. Oh, there's like a large building over here. There's like a warehouse of some kind. Oh, yeah, and there's, like, an overpass runner next to us. Yeah, and this, uh, this kind of weather, it's very inclement. It's kind of hard to see. I don't think it's a warehouse, actually. I think it's just, like, they're building, like, an overpass or something. I don't know. I'm going to try to save a little bit of my flashlight here, even though it's kind of dark. Search this guy. Grab some more polymers. Things don't auto-stack. That's definitely a quality of life thing that they're going to want to consider adding. My guess is I'm supposed to be following this thing. However, it doesn't look like it auto-refreshes. Oh, it does. It's just got like a really, really long refresh time. Maybe. Maybe not. I have no idea. Yeah, I think it just kind of updates from time to time. It doesn't look like it gives us any sort of map ping, but this is definitely more open world than I expected it to be. Like, way, way more updated than, like, way more open than I expected it to be, in all honesty. Okay. Is anything back up in the military truck? Yeah, there's an electromotor over here. Emergency unit, but nothing we can do with it for right now. We may need to go back to our sled, and we may need to drop off some equipment. But so far, Expedition Zero, like, on the visual front, I think they knocked it out of the park. All of the models and most of the animations seem to be pretty nice. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed by the gun firing animation. So, like, I would expect a little bit more kick from a Mosin Nagant. Mosin Nagant's, it's a heavy gun, so there's not quite as much kick as, say, like, something like an SKS. But still, like, it is firing a torpedo of a round. And so, like, the Mosin Nagant is definitely, like, not baby's first gun. Like, it's not a firearm that you give to a kid, you know, when you're teaching them how to shoot. Like, you give them, like, a twenty two or something first. Mosin Nagant will knock their shoulder off. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty tough gun. But anyways, I think the environmental effects are fantastic. They've really captured, like, what a blizzard looks like, what light looks like refracting through a whiteout, and stuff like that. And honestly, the atmosphere has got me creeped out as all hell. 
Like, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little tiny bit jumpy right now. The fact that there's a little bit of an open world aspect to it where you, like, explore areas and collect resources and then, like, resupply and do upgrades and stuff like that. And then you come back in for, like, a deeper look, I think, was a welcome thing. Like, I was expecting this to be kind of, like, on a, not on the rails, but, like, a survival horror game. But, like, it definitely seems like it's channeling a little bit more of the stalker-esque vibes than anything else. Although I am really stoked that they didn't start us off with a crappy little PM or, like, a little Makarov or something. Or, like, a little APS. Like, they gave us, like, an actual gun to begin the game out with. We just gotta find our way up to an SKS or, like, a glorious, uh... AK-47 or something like that. Either way, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were playing a little bit of Expedition Zero. I think there's a pretty good chance I might stream this game on the day that the game goes up on sale, so keep an eye out for that. I've always been kind of a fan of anything open-worldy that allows me to wander around post-apocalyptic wherever the hell we are. I'm guessing Russia, given, like, the deer feeders and the little huts, and the shrines, and everything else, the orthodox shrines. Guessing Russia, but you know, whatever. Uh, my name is Splattercat, I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block we had Expedition Zero, tomorrow we will have something else. I appreciate you stopping on in, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll be back later with more goodies. See everybody.